There are many new types of range extenders coming out. These types of engines can supplement an electric vehicle, extending the range and even acting as the main powertrain. The key to a range extender is to make it lightweight and economical. And many companies have come out with their own unique variant, which seems to tackle this newly formed market. So let's take a look at some of the strangest prototypes out there. Resembling somewhat of a boxer engine, the CV Motion Tech replaces the crankshaft with a rod rack and gearing. The immediate advantage is continuous torque for the overall stroke, along with a more complete fuel burn, so there is less emissions. It's also relatively easy to maintain and one of the more efficient designs out there. But the main drawback is that the gearing would eventually wear out, especially on larger, heavier torque models. As of right now, the company has demoed a 38cc, and this could act as a modular setup for hybrid vehicles. One of my favorite designs out there is from a body. As the piston moves, two rods act in scissor-like fashion, coupling rotating pinion gears to a fixed ring gear. Obviously, this is a little bit different from an ordinary piston engine, but the rotation is self-balancing, and it foregoes the need for a traditional valve train. In turn, the prototype produces around 15 horsepower and 22 foot-pounds of torque. There is a proclaimed to thermal efficiency of around 40%, which is really high. The only question that remains is obviously the longevity with the gearing. And we'll just have to wait and see if this is one of the front runners to mini engine designs. The opposed piston originated all the way back to the 1880s. Ranging from a Yumo 205 to a Napier Deltic, it was light enough to be utilized in aircraft and powerful enough to be used in locomotives. They are typically a two-stroke style of engine. But the problem is, is there is a lot of synchronization in the gearing, and they are very difficult to maintain. However, many companies are looking at a simpler kind of opposed piston design, including the Katy's Power. So this engine is far from dead. The INN is a very small version of the opposed piston but it also utilizes a form of rotational movement, so it's kind of like the Avadi. It was proclaimed as a one-stroke, but technically that's not really true because it's not making a full rotation at 360 degrees, and it's able to keep oil lubricated bearings away from the combustion components. It's a very interesting design, and the timing would definitely have to be perfected, making it to be one of the most potentially powerful mini engines out there. The iconic Wankel engine twisted the idea of the conventional piston into a powerful Dorito. Mazda ran with this idea, and their 13B variant had a fairly decent power to weight ratio. Drawbacks were poor fuel economy due to the large combustive surface area, along with some apex seal wear. The company is still going forth with their newly MX30, which acts as a range extender, but there's another contender for the rotary. Liquid Piston has revealed an oval thermodynamic cycle engine, and there are three combustions per revolution with optimized chamber geometry. In theory, this could allow for higher compression ratios, up to 20 to 1 at 1.5 horsepower per pound. The biggest criticism is that the company is painstakingly slow in development, and there's still a lot of debate on whether or not they actually fix the emission and seal problems associated with typical rotary engines. There is a lot of military investment in this company, and they have recently revealed an XTS prototype producing around 25 horsepower. Once in a while, there is a really weird engine which I have to read the specifications several times just to understand how it works. The Omega-1 is definitely one of these engines, and it's a pretty extreme but dramatic rotary engine. It has two synchronized gears, and the air essentially passes through the intake duct and creates a vacuum. There is a pre-ignition stage which mixes the fuel-air ratio, it then reaches a second gearing stage where combustion occurs. Now technically this is one of the lightest rotary variants out there, as it only weighs 35 pounds and can potentially throw out 160 horsepower. However, there are very high tolerances involved, and you'd have to be able to figure out how to maintain the seals on this type of engine. In theory, it could have the highest horsepower per pound ratio out of all the mini engines, but the company has yet to come out with a combustive cycle prototype.
The free piston is a very interesting engine. The piston motion is not controlled by a crankshaft, but determined by the interaction of forces from the combustion chamber gases, or a rebound device. The purpose of this engine is to generate power, and you can directly convert motion into electricity, which is why the free piston is probably one of the frontrunners when it comes to range extenders. The problem with this type of engine is that it's hard to balance. Aquarius attempted to shortcut these problems with a single piston dual combustion variant, but so far it has yet to be perfected and I suspect that it's heavily imbalanced. However, there is promise as the mainspring generator showed us how an opposed piston can actually work at a large scale. Libertine is also following the opposed free piston design. It's being modified to run on bioethanol via direct injection. The power system utilizes a servo drive and motion control tech accurately controls the compression ratio or power output. Five kilowatt generators are already being tested and it's definitely already being proven that the opposed piston is the key to the free piston linear generator. Well, I saved the best for last and turbine engines obviously have a very high power to weight ratio and Chrysler actually produced a turbine based car in the 1960s. However, they were very difficult to gear down with sluggish response. Evidently, it seemed like they were only useful in a quarter mile race with a parachute behind the vehicle. So incorporating one into an everyday commuting vehicle seemed like impractical, maybe a little bit extreme. Nevertheless, Tech Rules is playing around with a pair of turbines to power an electric vehicle. This might seem a little bit counterintuitive, but to a supercar, it means 0 to 60 in 3 seconds with a 1200 mile extended range. So the 100 horsepower turbines are basically driving generators which recharge the batteries. In the future, with 3D printing, turbines could become quite cheap for the ordinary jet or the hybrid VTOL, but they will likely not be used in your everyday car. But more importantly, I would like to know what you think about all this. So please leave a comment, like the video if you enjoyed it, and also make sure to subscribe to my channel.